Hi, and welcome to More Human, More Resources, the HR podcast for entrepreneurs. I'm Vicki Brown, your host and CEO of Vidomineo Enterprises. As a serial entrepreneur, I understand that having the right expert help has been critical to my success. That's why I'm dedicated to telling you, in plain language, what's going on in the world of HR that might impact your business and what you need to do about it with real actionable tips to help you master that list of must-dos and grow your leadership muscle. First things first, the information contained in this podcast is provided for general purposes only and is not to be considered legal advice. Your decision to adopt or not adopt any practice or procedure mentioned in this podcast is solely yours and we bear no responsibility for the outcome. We urge you to always consult legal counsel and other appropriate licensed professionals. And with that, let's get into the show. You're listening to Season 1, Episode 45. You know, we're a small team, so losing even one person makes us feel the gap. Well, recently, we lost three. That's right, three people, all in the span of a month. And because we rarely have any turnover, it was all the more jarring. So no, we aren't immune from the effects of the great resignation. The lure of having a remote job or working from home most of the time can be really compelling. And while we are adopting a hybrid model, the fact is we're going to be in the office the majority of the time, and that just isn't the right fit for some people. So after 25% of the team exited stage left, what happened next? Well, first, before you ask the question, yes, we did take the opportunity to take a close look at the office environment, how we manage, development opportunities for the team, equipment, and perks. After all, we do practice what we preach. And yes, as a result, some of those areas are getting a facelift. Next, while the team could temporarily absorb most of the work, there was still a gap. So I went back into daily client work. There was a bit of future shock to my system and the team. I had actually gotten to the point where the team was the front line and I wasn't doing client work anymore. In fact, I haven't for quite a while. So there was a big learning curve. Systems and processes had been created or enhanced. And of course, in the process, I saw a few things I thought needed changing or upgrading. You know, I actually recommend that leaders get on the front lines, sit in with customer service, do some client projects every once in a while. It's so valuable to see your processes from the ground up. When you can add that to your overall vision of where you want the company to go, you end up with masterful solutions. That's what happened in our case. I realized we have developed some great tools for holding and tracking client data, but it needed to be more integrated and all in one place. So as a result, we're implementing a project management collaboration tool across the whole organization. Everything organized in one place. I can't wait. And then there's notifying the clients. This is the one I always worry about. For some weird reason, well, actually it is of course fear-based, I get a pit in my stomach at the thought of telling a client their HR business partner has left the company. Imagine how it felt telling them that both people on their team were leaving the company. They're bound to think, what is going on over there that there is such turnover? Now, it doesn't matter to them that one person had been here for four years and the other for almost 15. All they know is their team is gone. Ugh, gives me a headache just to think about it. But then I realized the client just wants excellent service and continuity, and we could certainly take care of that. And yes, certainly a higher level of check-in is smart, so they know we're on top of their needs. But you know, almost to a person, our client said, Okay, thanks for taking care of us. And they just kept going. My point is, you're going to have to stand on your brand through highs and lows when mistakes happen, because they will happen, when you have to change members of a client support team. Your brand or reputation is the thing that will pull you through. It's the things you do every day, how you interact with the client every day, how they have experienced your customer service every day that matters. That's your reputation. That's the brand you've built. Of course, the next thing on the list was getting new team members. 
That's where our staffing division leapt into place. Now, I have to take a moment here to say out loud to whomever is listening, we have an amazing staffing director. Her instincts are spot on, and she came up with some great candidates for us. And I'm over the moon at who's going to be joining the team. And that leads me to onboarding. With new team members coming on board, and because that rarely happens for us, it made me take a good long look at our onboarding process. Oh, it's still pretty good, but again, a facelift was in order. So that's in process as well. So all in all, we'll certainly miss our former colleagues, but it turned out to be a great opportunity. An opportunity for us to throw everything up in the air and see what needed revamping and an opportunity to gain insight into how our clients experience us and how we support them. And an amazingly valuable opportunity for me as a leader and personally to take a good hard look at the team, how I'm leading them and ask the question, do they have the tools they need to do their best work? So change is good. We wish our former colleagues great success and we thank them for being the catalyst to our next level up. If you found this information helpful, please leave a review and tell a friend. Thanks for spending the time. Until next week, same time, same place.